Hello, welcome back to our last of our three lessons in graphing rational functions. We're going to do two more uh, of these guys here. None, neither of them are hard, but I've picked them because they're a little bit different than some of the other ones we've done, so you can kind of get a little bit of experience to see what different rational functions look like. We're going to follow the same recipe. We're going to find the zeros of the function. We're going to find if there are any vertical asymptotes. Then we'll investigate if, to see if there are any horizontal asymptotes by looking at what happens when the function goes to plus or minus infinity in x. Okay? Then we'll take a look once we know that and figure out some special points. We don't need to pick uh, uh, and do an entire table like we did in the beginning. We'll just pick a few key points to figure out what the function looks like and then from those we will then sketch the whole thing. All right, so our first of two questions we have here is what if f of x uh, is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared? So here's a rational function. And we're going to follow, as I said several times, the same exact process. First, we're going to see, are there any zeros of this function? To figure out if there are any zeros, we take the numerator of the fraction and set it equal to zero because that will drive the whole thing to zero. Right? So first thing you do is you try to solve this. You say, well, is this factorable? You can try to factor this all you want, but it's not going to be factorable. If it were x squared minus 1, then it would be the difference of two squares because 1 can be written as 1 squared. If it were a minus here, you could write it as a difference of two squares and, and kind of factor it and solve it. But x squared plus 1 is not factorable. Even if you open parentheses up and just try, 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 you're not going to be able to factor it any more than, than what's written there. So then some students will say, well, let me go ahead and move the 1 over here. Let's say x squared is equal to negative 1. How do I solve that? Well, we're going to learn later how to do that. We're going to use square roots, or what we call radicals in algebra. So you could take the square root of the left, which would kill the square here. And then you would have to take then the square root of the right, square root of a negative number. Now, we haven't learned it yet in this class, but a lot of you probably know, and if you don't know, you'll learn it right now, you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's what you've learned up to now. But let me tack on to the end of that. You can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer. That's really the, the actual uh, answer to the question. We're going to learn in algebra that you can actually take the square root of negative numbers, no problem. But in order to do that, we have to use something called an imaginary number. We're not there yet. And in any way, it doesn't matter because even if you get an imaginary answer, the graph that we're using to represent the thing has no imaginary numbers on it, so you can't represent an imaginary number on a real graph like we're using. So the idea is there's no real answers to this. So you say there are no zeros. There are no real zeros. We'll call it like this. No real zeros. Right? So later on, we'll talk about imaginary numbers, and we'll figure out that, yeah, there's some imaginary answers, and, and you might use it in more advanced mathematics. But for this, to figure out where the function goes to 0, there are no real answers to that. So there are no values of x. Because if you think about it, there are no values of x that drive the thing to 0. Because if you put, even if you put a negative number in here, let's say negative 5, you square it, you're going to get a positive 25. But then you'll add 1 to it, so you'll always get a positive answer. So no matter if you stick negative values or positive values in, you will always get a positive answer on the top. You will never, ever get zero. It's, it's never possible to drive that thing to zero. So there are no zeros. This function does not cross the x-axis. Now let's take a look at the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes. In order to do that, we take a look at the denominator and set it equal to zero, right, like this. And we figure out that, of course, we can solve this. You can think of it as, you can take the square root of the left and the square root of the right, and we'll do that a little bit later. But you can, at this point in the game, think of it as x times x being equal to 0, because that's what x squared is. So we can set x equal to 0. That will be one solution. We can set the other x equal to 